If you're planning a build or upgrade with the Ryzen 5 7500F and you're unsure which GPU makes the most sense, this video is for you. The 7500F is a strong 1080p and 1440p processor, so you've got plenty of good options, budget, mid-range, and even some newer releases. Let's quickly break down the best picks so you can choose the right card without overpaying. Let's start with the most budget-friendly choices, the RX 6600 and RX 6600 XT. Both come with 8GB of VRAM, which is still totally fine for 1080p in 2025, and honestly, that's why these cards still hold up so well. The RX 6600 is the cheapest way to get solid high settings 1080p gaming, and if you're okay with the used market, you can find it in the low $100. The RX 6600 XT gives you a decent bump in performance, enough to push some older titles at 1440p if you want to experiment, and used prices for these are still pretty good. Both cards pair perfectly with the 7500 if you're keeping the budget tight. Now, if you want something a bit newer, the RX 7600 and RX 7600 XT are pretty much sweet spot options. However, there is one big difference between these cards. The 7600 has only eight gigabytes of VRAM, but the XT version comes with 16 gigabytes, which is great, but performance-wise at 1080p, the difference is pretty slim. Reviews found the XT only about five to 7% faster on average than the 7600 in most games. So if your budget leans tighter, then the 7600 is already fantastic for 1080p. But if you want smoother performance under heavier loads or plan to hang onto your card longer, then the 7600 XT with its 16 gigabytes of VRAM is the better long-term buy. Their used prices usually sit in the $180 to $250 range. So which one fits your requirements and budget? You can choose that one. Next one is the Intel Arc B580, and this is where things get interesting. For the price, you're getting 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is a huge plus if you're thinking long-term or planning to play texture-heavy games. Performance-wise, it competes really well at 1080p and even holds up nicely at 1440p in many titles. Intel drivers have improved a lot, so you're not dealing with the early headaches anymore. If you want more VRAM and great value without jumping into high-end pricing, the B580 is honestly worth considering. Now let's talk about the newest cards. The RX 9060 XT is the next level for people who want something with more power. It comes in both eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte versions. And obviously the 16 gigabyte model is the one you'd want if you're thinking about long-term use. Performance wise, it's a clear step above the RX 7600 XT, especially in newer games. And it's also good for some 1440p gaming. If your plan is, I want something fast and I don't want to upgrade again soon, this is the card to look at. And finally, the RTX 5060 Ti for the NVIDIA fans. If you want DLSS, better ray tracing performance, reflex, NVENC, basically the whole NVIDIA ecosystem, this is where it makes sense. It's great for 1080p max settings and very capable at 1440p when you use DLSS. The 16 gigabyte variant is the one you should pick if the price difference isn't crazy and the 7500F pairs with it beautifully. All of these cards pair really well with this processor. You just need to pick based on your budget and the resolution you want to play at. If you've got any other GPUs in mind or want a recommendation for your exact budget, just drop it in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.